Hello everybody and welcome to the CSDM Crash Course. My goal in this course is to up-level everybody's game on the common service data model at least a little bit. The CS part is really common service. It's a set of common properties on a service so that we can provide standardized reporting regardless of what type of service it is. The data model is really about the CMDB. It's the whole model of that service, of all those different pieces of the service working in concert to deliver value back to the business. All of the ServiceNow products leverage this model. It really makes for a nice joining feature across the platform. During this crash course, there is going to be a hands-on section and we're going to try to keep it under 20 minutes. You can either get it from following our public service template on GitHub and that's why I'll be speaking to those people. But I'm also going to be speaking to people that just want to do this crash course and aren't really interested in that GitHub section. If you want to go that way, the code is in a folder and I'm going to provide that link to that folder, the one you see on the bottom, the Google Doc. I'm going to put that link in the video notes. Go down in the video notes and you can pull that back. Otherwise, if you don't want to do the hands-on, you can just go ahead and follow along. This is the data model picture. So each of those little white boxes are a different table inside ServiceNow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back and forth and we're going to look at how this is being created across our instance as we go. My goal is to show you the primary parts of this data model and I'm going to show you them in three different ways as we go through the, the steps. Now if you jump over to your instance, you should be able to go ahead and if you are in the public service template, if you are following along on the video, you're able to go to scripts to run and in scripts to run, you should see one in there called unleash the common service data model. If you're following along and you want to get the code from Google, you can go to Google Docs and the link and you would be able to type fix script rather in your navigator and you can go create your own fix script and just paste that code in the fix script section. So all you need is a title, you paste the code from our Google Doc and you'll be able to run this fix script. But you can see that there's 13 steps in the fix script and what this is going to do, it's going to build out the common service data model. I want to give you one end to end example so that we can go back and reference that inside the document. If we go down, you'll see that I have one through 13 here. And then in the bottom of the notes, you'll see this is number one. This is number two. So you can read what each of these sections do in the code. And you'll actually be able to go in and look at the little piece of code. Even if you're not a coder, you'll be able to go in and see this is the table that I'm inserting that data into. If we go and look at our first step, it's going to create a service portfolio and then it's going to create a layer around that portfolio where we're going to be able to put in our different taxonomies, what we call taxonomies. These are basically folders that we're going to put services in. That's what our taxonomies are. If we go back to the document and we look at our document here, I'm specifically talking about this area here. And if I go to the service portfolio, I'm going to create one called services. I'm going to create a, a taxonomy node in a portfolio called services. This is actually step three in our script. If I go back to our script and I look at step three, this is it's actually creating a taxonomy. What number one and number two do is they actually create the whole portfolio. So it's basically a group of taxonomies. We'll see where that comes out later but it's going to create a public services portfolio, it's called. Underneath that, it's going to create a layer in here called pub services taxonomy layer. And then just like in that picture, right, it's going to create a node called services. If we go to number four, we're going to create the business service called non-emergency issues. If we go back to our script and look at number five, what it's going to do, it's going to create a service offering. The service offering is a piece underneath there and this is actually what they call a stratification, right? So it's, it's basically a more refined definition of the service. I'm saying non-emergency issues and then on business service would actually be report a street light out is the business service offering. So you'll see in my script here in number five that we do that. And then in number six, we create an association between the report a street light out and the catalog item. But the next thing we want to do is we want to create a connection to our request catalog. If you're following along from Google, 
you won't get this piece because we already created the report of street light out in a prior video. What we're going to do is we're going to attach the service offering now to that catalog item in number six. And you can see a little bit of code that does here in a table called SC cat item subscribe no mtom. Basically a, a service that you don't subscribe to and it's a many to many service. All right, so you can skip that if you're just following along, like I said, on, on the Google Doc. After that, what we want to do is create an application service. Our application service is going to be the technology stack that's going to support the service that we're delivering. We're delivering Report a Streetlight out to the business, and the service now for PS Prod is the application service that supports that from a technology perspective. And here in the script, if you go down to number seven, I'm creating a service in this table. The name of its service now for PS Prod. And if we go to number eight, what we need to do now is create a relationship between our application service, our technology stack, and what we're delivering to the business, which is report a street light out. And if you'll see down here, this creates a depends on relationship. If we go back here, you'll see in number eight that we create that dependency and it's a depends on and used by relationship. The business service that report a street light out it depends on that relationship with the application service. The next thing we need is the business app. Now this is more of a representation. I bought something. I, I went and paid a, a purchase order so that I could license this component. In this case, it's ServiceNow for our public services. So you bought a, a license from ServiceNow. In this case, if you're following along in our template, that's CSM that we're using. And you bought that from ServiceNow, and that's number nine. You'll see here in number nine, we create a, an entry into our business app table. We go ahead and put that in there. And this will work on Google. Uh, this is a link to a specific category, which is called COTS, which means it's off the shelf versus custom. And that'll create that record in number nine. The next thing we need to do is create the relationship between the, the app that we purchased and the technology stack. Now, if you'll notice, this is a different type of relationship. This is a consumes relationship. If we go back in our script and look at number 10, we'll be able to see that how that relationship is built. Number 10, we're going again and we're entering that into the relationship table. And the business app is the parent and then the application service is the child and it's consumes and consumed by relationship. All right, so let's look at number 11. Number 11 would be to add the capability. Now this is usually where it all starts. So we're going backwards now. Usually the business is saying, I need some type of capability. So in this case, somebody, they, need, they said, we need digital services for the public. We need to be able to go out and provide a form to the public and have the public fill that form in and it comes back to us. That capability is what we're gonna go ahead and define here in number 11. If you see the business capability is digital public service. Again, we see the table that we're entering it in. Number 12 is to create a dependency. Just like we did before, I need a, now I need a dependency between the capability and the business application. And that's really number 12, which is a provided by dependency. But each one has a little bit of a different dependency because that describes the interaction between the two components. Go back to number 12, you'll see that dependency. 13 is where I go off script a little bit. In 13, I actually developed a relationship between the business service and the service offering. This is not prescribed according to the common service data model. I'll explain why I do it in a little while, just to have you know that you can skip 13 if it's, if it's a relationship you don't want to use. There are some benefits to creating that relationship in number 13. And you can see down here what I did is I created a relationship called contains and contained by. And as I said, there are some reasons why. What you can do is you can go ahead and click on run this fixed script, whether you've saved it in or you're following along. And when I click on proceed here, it's going to go ahead and execute all those steps. So now what it should be doing is it should be creating all those models inside of my CMDB. Now the easiest way to see this is to go to CSDM. And if you go to CSDM, you will have a getting started piece. 
And then you have those same sections that correspond to our diagram. If we go in and we look at, we'll start this way this time. So if we look at our CSDM design domain, we'll see a business capability. If I go under CSDM design business capability, I should now see that service called digital public services. If I go back and I say, what, what did we actually buy? What is the business application? Well, it's service now for PS or public services. If I go in here and I go down to the business application, I now have an entry for service now for PS and it's a COTS uh, cloud application. I put some entries in that table. If you look back in the diagram, you'll see that this is the enterprise architect and the application owner. This is their view. Now, if I go back here and I go down to the next section, let's jump down to this section and we created our application service. If we go to manage technical services under the CSDM, you'll see application service and you can click on that. And in the application service, we should see that we've created one now, which are service now for PS prod. And then the same thing, if we go down to sell and consume, which is our other domain over here, we take the sell and consume domain and we can see our business service portfolio. This is the first thing we created inside that portfolio is a business service offering the report of street light out. And the parent of that report of street light out is the business service, which is called non-emergency services or non-emergency issues. So you'll see that we did all of these sections. Uh, all of this is created inside the catalog. Now let's take a look at it from another way. We've already looked at it two different ways. We looked at it in the script. We ran the script and look at it built inside of the CSDM. Now let's go ahead and jump and take that middle piece. So what I want to do is I want to open the record for this application service. If I go ahead and open the record for the application service, and when you open this, it's going to bring you into a wizard is the default view for the application service. And that's actually, that will let you go through and you can manually add other things onto your service. If I wanted to add another business application instead of this one that, I, that was added by my script, I can go ahead and add more. Or if I wanted to add another service offering, I could do the same thing. I could add more. What I want to do is just to illustrate one more point. We're going to look at it from one more perspective. Click on advanced underneath that application service. And if I go to the advanced view, it will give me the related items. Or I could look at this on a dependency view. And this is the last one I'm going to go through because I want to try to keep this under 20 minutes. But hopefully you're seeing all these relationships. Now, what the dependency view lets us see is the relationships and how th those different components interact. We have our business capability. You can either print this out if you want to, but our business capability is digital services for public and service now for PS is our business app. You'll see that relationship here between those two, and you'll see that it's a provided by provides relationship. The same down to our app service. So you can walk through those individual ones, but this is this is now we're looking at all the relationships between those. If I wanted to in here, I can actually go to that record. If I wanted to see the record for my service offering, um, in this case, usually the service offering record is like a, a customer service manager. Somebody in the business would probably be the one that would be using this record to view from. That person wanted to see that record or if you wanted to see who was the owner of that service offering, I'd be able to go ahead and open that offering up and I could actually right click on it. I could view the form and I would get more information about this service. I'm not going to go into depth in depth on how these services are, but here you'll find the support group. You'll find the change group. You'll find all the people who care for that component as opposed to the ones who are caring for the application, which are more like contract managers and enterprise architects. Real beauty of the common service data model is that it brings all those people together and really focuses them on delivering that service. Usually these pieces are all done, but they're not done together. And that's the real benefit of the common service data model. If you do go back and you look at the script again that we were looking at before, you'll notice or remember number 13 that I mentioned earlier. If you don't use that relationship that I put in there, the contains relationship, what will happen is you will not see the parent business service. You'll see the offering, but it won't show you the backstream relationship to that business service. The only way to see this relationship 
is to open the business service and if you, if you didn't define number 13, it would use what we call a reference relationship. That reference relationship only shows from the perspective of the business service. So I opened the app service here. Therefore, the business service would not show up. It is optional if you want to do that, but it goes a little bit outside the common service data model recommendations. I will end on just one other short section, and this is only if you have ITSM Professional. If you do have ITSM Professional, you will also have access to the service owner workspace. And if you open the service owner workspace, you'll see that we have the structure built out. So the public services portfolio is the portfolio that I built. If you go on all services, you'll see that there's the services folder. That's what we built in number one and number two of our script. And then if you open services, you'll eventually see our service offering that was in there. We did non-emergency service was the services. So you'd see the parent here. And then underneath that parent, non-emergency issues rather, underneath that non-emergency issues, you would see the report of street light out. The reason we don't see it yet is because I haven't made those operational at this point. The script just installs it so you can really get your hands around the structure, but I don't go into any detail on how to configure that. We'll be going into that in some of the later videos. If you are following along on the public service template, GitHub project. If you're not, the purpose of today, hopefully it brought you a little more clarity on the relationships between those items in the CMDB. If you want to go ahead and delete this, if you are doing this in your dev environment, <clears throat> you can go back and just go down your CSDM. And I would start with just the way we will walk through it. Remove your capability, remove your application. You can come down here into the portfolio on the cell consume area, remove your portfolio, remove your service, remove your offering. And then also the last piece is remove your application service. What we did is we went around the circle here and defined these middle pieces. The idea behind this auto service was that once we put a URL in there in that actual object, it should be able to discover all the downstream objects. And that gets more into service discovery, which is a little bit outside our scope today. I just wanted to go through this center core pieces. Now, the other piece I didn't cover were actually the groups and the roles. And this is where I did mention briefly where you would have a support group, where you'd have a support manager, even a service owner. All those people would go in those objects, and that would all come from your foundations section. Hopefully this helps you understand that these are, it's not a big thing. These are just entries in a table. The relationships are entries in another table. And really that's what starts you off on the common service data model and getting all that downstream value from being able to create an organization around the service. Thanks.